This is a poem about Brexit and democracy. Democracy unfolded, emergent reality of Brexit. Who's that? Unfold yourself. I am democracy. Who are you? What business have you here with your government? You claim my mandate and this is my torment. Is there an election? It is then we make you our promises. Come back then and don't trouble me. Democracy tells her tale of ancient grudges, as old as Nixon's shock and older still. One government sought in referendum to claim the people's will. Now Article 50 awaits more work. Politicians, some, wish democratic yokes to shirk. Two governments equal in wealth reveal their darker purposes. For them, the will of the people simply usurps. Government should remain confined in elitist auspices. Of recent history we might recap. First Heath claimed his mooring with the 72 Act. Suckled at Elysium's breast that fabled paradise, this was his rightful claim. 32.76% of the eligible vote put him in the frame. Then Mr Wilson, with a wave of his pipe, gave the great unwashed its first swipe. In 75's referendum, do we stay or go? 43.55% of the eligible vote did not say no. Famously hung that Parliament of 74, a majority later that year of little more. The mandate of the eligible vote in October, almost percentage 34. Passage aboard Heath's European vessel was an awkward continuum. Aye, some saw GB Limited anchored as the prison ship in the bay. Others had songs to sing, Britannia, daughter of Elysium. Some demanded return of sovereignty with audible dismay. An iron lady raised her petticoats a little, but said none. Mr Major fought his bastards and Lamont reported difficulties with a certain mechanism. A certain goldsmith fashioned, some say of gold, others of fool's gold, a party preferring kippers to croissant. Europeans mourned the recalcitrant. Thatcher, Major, Blair and Brown, Europeans all are not letting Erasmus down. Skeptics in their ranks always dwelt, briefing in secret with mislicious dissent. A quarrel on green and red benches, in panelled halls, plenary and committee, all elite places, not for the menches. At last we arrive at the next hung election. Cameron and Clegg, in 2010, form coalition. Eligible mandate of 22.65 combined. Hardly overwhelming, but never mind. Lib Dem sue for AV referendum. 2011 petition, a risible turnout. Eligible 28.67 mandate. That's hokum, a limp declaration, hardly a rout. Once more democracy is just a ghost. No prizes for guessing who it suited the most. It was though only a vote about votes. The plebs can't be trusted to not burn the toast. Mr Cameron continued with dedication to make bigger societies smaller, denying a nation. This time the subject, Scottish emancipation. In 2013 his government prepared the legislation. In 2014 his parcel of rogues bed democratic teeth, worthy of the pogues. Better together, or Scotland the brave, the four estates of establishment with a union to save. The nuclear deterrent saving oil of North Sea, with record turnout 84.6, the Scots seem somewhat more keen for democracy. What mandate did the vote glean? Eligible vote, 46.78% is worthy of note. Indeed, it is the best that will be seen. Our history lesson now comes full circle to the latest referendum of interest to Madame Merkel. 
On 24th of June 2016, 37.47% of eligible vote said leave, whilst by the same measure, 34.74% said stay. Herein lies the rub of the present joy and dismay. Mr Cameron's 2015 mandate was what, you may ask? This poem replies it is up to the task. 23.97% is the answer you seek. I'll leave it to you decide. Is that strong or is that weak? To leadership elections we will now meander. Source for the goose, surely source for the gander. To complain of a mandate of 24, having secured one of your own. 32.55, little more. Whilst arguing the weak mandate of 37.5 for Brexit, when in a hole lay down your spade and look for the exit, comparing 46.7 for Union and 28.68 for First Past the Post, who's to say which mandate is most? 43.55 to stay in 75 and 32.76 in 72, blessed as sufficient? It seems quite absurd, less than efficient. What do we learn from lies, damned lies and statistics, polling and rhetoric and voting logistics? Perhaps that mandates like beauty are in the eye of the beholder, who whilst in glass houses should think twice before casting that boulder. Indeed, one should always be mindful of the many known unknowns, and that politicians are rarely Democrats, even as they grow old. So three Brexiteers, to both booze and to cheers, prepare to cast off from Heath's European peers. Prime Minister May, with the inners, did lay. But Mr Cameron's mandate, she will now play. Mr Corbyn in opposition, she mocks as unfit for power, but at his 45.39% mandate, she can only glower. Perhaps we should next ask the EU Commission what mandate it claims and by whose permission. On the European Parliament, what is its turnout? No better than 42.61 in 2014. Democratic burnout? Other appointments by experts or politicians are trafficked as trade, whose mandates in turn are less than well made. The land of the brave and the home of the free must also be consulted on how we do democracy. First, what mandate does Liberty claim for her European colony of martial plans, two world wars and maybe three? Across the geopolitical scene we must cast a glance at sovereign nations speared upon the dollar's lance. Refugees from Occidental conflict as a great game plays out. Oligarchs alone set the rules and set the price of permit. An ECB tied to global capital which punished Greece and placed the pigs in manacles of debt whilst government has allowed bankers alone special and exorbitant privilege. Again, democracy says, for them the will of the people simply usurps. Government should remain confined in elitist auspices.